grace and to mercy. God, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. So we just come and we lift our hands right now, oh God, in praise and adoration unto you, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for being a God that considers us, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your faithfulness, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your grace and your mercy, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that you've protected us all day long, oh God. We even are grateful for the rain, oh God, that fell from the sky all day today, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for the dew, oh God, that came to replenish the earth, oh God. And so as it is happening in the natural, we pray that it happens in the spiritual, Lord God, that your dew replenishes the earth, Lord God. Hallelujah, oh God. You are supreme and all-knowing, oh God. And so we reverence you, oh God, for being the Godhead. We reverence you, oh God, in your trinity state, God. We bless you that you are God, our Father. We thank you, oh God, for being God the Son. God, we thank you, oh God, that you're also the Holy Ghost that comforts us. Yeah, God. So we thank you, oh God, that whatever we need, hallelujah, God, your hand
work too hard and trying to handle it on my own. No. But here I am, I need a change inside. I'm asking you to do it for me one more time.
the church 8,000 plus members in their hometown and then build a multi-million dollar edifice in the midst of a pandemic. There's oil on his life. He's been here. He's not a stranger to us. I want you to open your hearts and your minds, your spirit to receive what thus said the Lord through the man of God, my big brother, friend, and mentor, Pastor Art Jackson III. Let's thank God for him as he comes. that he made clay. It was marred in the hand 
to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Turn to your neighbor, look him or her now, and say, Neighbor, stay in the Lord's hands. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Stay in the Lord's hands. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Stay in the Lord's hands. This evening, my brothers and sisters, our sermonic spotlight, it shines on one of the messianic mouthpieces of, of God. And this man that we've come to know and to love by the name of Jeremiah. Can the church just shout Jeremiah? Jeremiah, Jeremiah is chronicled in the Bible as one of the major um, prophets of, of the Bible. And you Bible readers know that there are two sections, a prophets, major prophets, and minor prophets. And the difference between the major and the minor prophets is not so much the con, um, um, context of what they um, said, um, but it was the content of what they said. Uh, that what made the major prophets differ from the minor prophets was how much more the major prophets had to say. That Jeremiah is one of the major prophets of the Lord. Prophets were ordinary men that had an extra ordinary calling, calling on their lives. And prophets were men who were not popular. They didn't seek prestige. They were people who did not prophesy for perks, people who were not people pleasers, but yet they were persons who possessed power from the Lord. Prophets were people that spoke to God on the behalf of men and turned around and spoke to men on the behalf of God. They were powerful men. They were brave men. What made them brave was that prophets spoke truth to power. They would stand before kings and magistrates and say what thus said the Lord. Jeremiah is one of these men, according to our text tonight. Jeremiah is on an assignment from the Lord, according to our text tonight. God has commissioned Jeremiah to warn the people of God that hard times were on the horizon. If you were to read the context of the book of Jeremiah, you would discover uh, that the people had stopped honoring God in their living and in their giving. And as a result, Tyler, Jeremiah was given a twofold assignment. His primary assignment was to warn the children of Israel that hard times were on the horizon. His primary assignment was to warn the people of God that because of their apathy toward God because of their lack of obedience in their living and their giving. That captivity was on the horizon. But the second assignment, his secondary assignment, was to encourage them that even though hard times were on the horizon, that God had plans to hold them in his hands. <laughs> his primary assignment was to let them know that a storm was coming. But the secondary assignment was to let them know that God was going to be a shelter in the time of a storm. To give Jeremiah a ocular demonstration or an illustration of how God planned to hold Israel in his hands, God tells him in our text tonight to get up and to go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my word. I don't want you to miss that verse because if you miss this verse, you're going to miss the essence of what the Lord is trying to teach us and Jeremiah. The Lord says to him, if your Bibles are still open, arise and go down to the potter's house and there. Somebody shout there. there. God says there I'll cause you to hear my word. Jeremiah has been given an assignment. And the assignment was to reposition himself from where he was to the potter's house. Because at the potter's house, the Lord would release a word from him. Please don't miss that, church. 
God has a specific word for a specific person that's going to be given at a specific place. In order for Jeremiah to get the word for the Lord, from the Lord, he has to leave from where he is and get to the potter's house because there, somebody shout there. <laughs> Y'all ain't got it yet. There, the word is going to be released. If Jeremiah never gets to the potter's house, he never gets the word that God has for his life. So therefore, he has to get there. Somebody shout there. Okay, let me see if I can help you. It's kind of like a, a timing play in, in football. We are in the midst of a football um, season. One of my favorite cousins, he played for the Dallas Cowboys back when they were good. Um, um, he, he, he was a tight end, a tight end um, for the Dallas Cowboys. His coach at the time um, was Jimmy Johnson. His quarterback at the time was Troy Aikman. And so my cousin, Alfredo Roberts, he would do this timing play with the quarterback back. He would run 10 yards down the field, turn right, run five miles to the five uh, yards to the right. And by the time he turned around, the ball would be in his hands. It, it, it's called a timing play. Don't miss that. He would run 10 yards down the field, turn right, run five yards out. And by the time he turned around, the ball would be in his hands. What's so special about the play, Greg, is this, that Troy Aikman was not throwing to a person. He was throwing to a place. And what Alfredo had to do was he had to make sure he got in the right place at the right time because the quarterback wasn't throwing the ball to him. He was throwing the ball. Y'all ain't got it yet. God tells Jeremiah, I, 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 got a, I got a play for you. I got a word for you. But in order to get your word, you have to go down to the potter. Are y'all hearing me? He has to do whatever he has to do to get to the right place at the right time because God had a word for his life. Can I suggest to somebody listening to me tonight, maybe we miss out on our word because we're not at the right place at the right place. <clears throat> time. Y'all ain't talking to me. Maybe we miss out on the things that God has for us because we're too busy being defended and blocked by blockers who are in the way. But can I suggest as I press my case tonight that if we're going to receive the word that God has for us, we have to get to the right place at the right time. Somebody shout the potter's house. God tells Jeremiah to arise and go down to the potter's house. And when you get to the potter's house, I have a word from the Lord for you. But the word is at where? The potter's house. Now, please understand that the potter's house is the shop and not the showroom. It's a difference between the shop and, and, and the showroom because uh, the showroom is where finished clay is on display. Uh, the shop is where clay is being molded. Are y'all hearing me? God, God does not send Jeremiah to the showroom. He sends Jeremiah to the shop. I, I put emphasis on that because uh, who you really are is not developed in the showroom. But who you are is developed in the shop. In, in fact, if I really want to see uh, what you're made of, I, I don't watch you in the showroom. I, I have to watch you. I got the wrong crowd. <laughs> Somebody here knows exactly what I'm talking about because Sunday morning is the showroom. Are y'all hearing me? When, when you come uh, in an ecclesiastical setting like this, this is uh, the showroom. But if you really want to see what makes me shout and see what makes me worship, if you want to know uh, who made me what I am, if you want to know how I'm able to take a licking and keep on ticking, how I'm able to smile at Negroes that despise the ground I walk on and still hold my head up and hold my shoulders back. Um, you, you can't look at me in the showroom room you have to follow me down to the shop because when you go to the shop you see exactly what I'm made of Jeremiah Jeremiah he gets up from where he is can I teach tonight 
he leaves from where he is and he goes down to the father's house because he needs a word from the Lord. And when Jeremiah gets to the potter's house, according to the narrative, he sees the potter, but the potter doesn't see him. It is as if Dr. McFadden, that, that, that Jeremiah is looking through um, the window of, of the potter's house, spying on the potter. And he notices several things in this narrative that I want to point out tonight. The first thing that he notices when he looks through the window is this. He notices that the potter has started working on the clay. R repeat that with me. Say, he started working on the clay. The, the first thing, if you're taking notes, you got to write this down. He notices that, that the potter has started a work on the clay. The Bible says in verse 3 that Jeremiah says, as I was looking through the window, watch this, he says, I saw him working at the wheel. Does your Bible say that? The Bible says that he saw him working at the wheel. Stop, look this way. At this point, champ, um, Jeremiah has no clue uh, of what the vessel is going to look like. He, he doesn't know the scope of the work. All he know is the start of the work. He, he doesn't know if the potter is making a vase or a lamp. He doesn't know if the potter is making an ashtray. He, he doesn't know exactly what the potter is trying to make. All he know is that that the clay is changing right before his eyes. <laughs> Somebody, oh God, praise right there because uh, if the truth be told, you really don't know what God is doing with your life. All you know is that things are changing not right before folk eyes. You, you don't know if you're going to be a missionary, a deacon, a choir member, an usher, a pastor. You don't know if you're going to stay where you are. But the truth of the matter is God is changing you. Things are changing in your life right before people's eyes. So every now and then you have to stop and give God a what I call progressive praise. You're not praising him because he's finished the work. You're praising him because God has pulled a permit on your life and started the work. You owe God crazy praise, not because God has finished working on your life, but you owe God praise because he has started working on your life. Can I help you somebody tonight? The Bible says that he's watching through the windows and he notices, can I teach tonight, that the potter has started working on the clay. Can the church shout, he started working on the clay? Now, let me teach you tonight, because in order for the potter to start working on the clay, two things had to happen. Number one, he had to relocate the clay. Somebody shout, relocate the clay. He had to relocate the clay because in verse number three, pastor, the Bible says that the clay was on the wheels. Can I teach tonight? When you look at verse number three, keep your Bibles open. The Bible says that he saw the potter, watch this, working at the wheel. Somebody shout the wheel. When you look at verse number three, the clay, watch this, is on the wheel, meaning this, that the clay is no longer in the yard, in the dirt, but the clay is in the house on the wheel. So that tells me at some point before verse number three, that the potter had to get a shovel, had to go outside, had to go dig the clay out the dirt, had to wash the clay off, had to bring the clay in the house, and then put the clay on the wheel because by the time Jeremiah gets there the clay is no longer in the yard in the dirt but the clay is in the house on the wheel some of y'all are looking at me and you ain't shouting it's because you think I'm talking about clay but I'm really talking about you because what God did for you was he had to go to the club had to dig you up had to wash you off and then bring you in the house because you wasn't born in the house 
house on the table. He found you in the yard, in the dirt. And every now and then, we come to church and give God praise because we know where God, I got the wrong crowd. Let me do a, 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 a check. Am I talking to somebody in the house tonight who can admit that he didn't find you in the house or on the wheel? He didn't find you in BTU, Sunday School, Crusade for Christ, Red Circle, Sunshine Band. He didn't find you in the deacon ministry. He didn't find you on the piano, but he found you in the bar, found you in the club, found you in the street, found you beneath the, help me somebody. And your praise is that the Lord pick you up, wash you off, put you on the table in the house. And so if you can't give God praise for nothing else, praise God for your relocation. Tell somebody he relocated me. By the way, by the way, by the way, in order for the potter, sit down, you're making me nervous. In order for the potter to work on the clay, not only does he have to relocate the clay, he has to rotate the clay. Somebody shout, rotate the clay. I'm still in verse 3. The Bible, I'm in verse 3, that he brings the clay in the house and then put the clay where? On the wheels. <laughs> Y'all get me tonight. He puts the clay on, 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 on the wheel. Somebody know what I'm talking about. If you've ever seen a ceramicist work on, on clay, it, they put the clay on something that rotates. Are y'all hearing me? puts the clay on the wheel and as the clay uh, is on the wheel the clay is uh, revolving can I teach tonight the clay is revolving that, that, that thing shouted me right there brother because as the clay is revolving the potter sees every side of the clay as the clay uh, is going in a circle the potter sees every side of the clay and guess what church that's our shout right there because the Lord sees every side of us. He not only relocates us, but he rotates us. He puts us in a position that God can see every eye side of us. That's why when the choir sings his eyes are on the sparrow and they're watching over me. We owe God crazy praise right there because that's our testimony. That's why we're still here because God sees every side of us. He knows my uprising, my downsizing. He knows my thoughts thoughts are far off. He knows my words before I say them, my thoughts before I think them, where I've been before I go. He knows everything about me because he sees every, help me somebody, every side of me. Jeremiah is looking through the window and as he's looking through the window of the potter's house, he sees several things. The first thing that he sees watch the text is uh, he notices that the potter has started a work on the clay but that's not the only thing he notices. In verse 4 he notices secondly that the potter sees worth in the clay. Watch the text. The Bible suggests that the potter not only starts working on the clay, but the potter sees worth in the clay. Because the text says, Greg, that the pot he was making was marred in his hands. Please, please, please don't miss that, church, that the potter uh, was working on the clay. But as he watched this, working, missed it on the clay, he sees something wrong with the clay you missed it um um the bible says that the clay was marred that that word marred in the hebrew it literally means that defected it it it, 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 it connotes the thought of some severe deformity or dysfunction that that the clay can i teach tonight the clay it was marred in the hands of the potter he, he he's working on the clay but as he's working on the clay, he sees something wrong with the clay. But he only sees something wrong with the clay because he's working on the clay. If he would have never started working on the clay, he would have never saw something wrong with the clay. But because he started the work, he saw something wrong, but, but, but here's the shout. The wrong that he saw didn't start the, stop the work that he started. 
Okay, you don't know when to shout. You, you don't know. You, you don't know when to shout. I mean, you, you, you just added um, two minutes to the sermon because now I got to say it all over again. So, so, so don't blame me. This is not my fault. Uh, not, not, it's your fault because you didn't catch it. Now, now I got to say it again. The potter, uh, he's working on the clay. And, and as he's working on the clay, he sees something wrong with the chair clay. But he only sees something wrong with the clay because he started working on the clay. But the shout is uh, that the wrong that he sees doesn't stop the work that he starts. Yes, he sees my wrong, but the shout is my wrong has not stopped his work. Somebody ought to give God praise right there because the shout is this. Most folks see your wrong and they don't want to fool with you no more. They'll see your dysfunctions and want to run away from you. They'll see your private proclivities, your habitual habits. They'll see your issues and don't want to fool with you no more, but you don't have a God like that. The God we serve, he sees our wrong, but he never stops our work. Somebody right now ought to help me give God crazy praise just because he's still working on your life. As wrong as we can be, he's still working. As fickle as we can be, he's still working. As two-timey as we can be, he's still working. As spiritually schizophrenic as we can be, he is still working on our life because the wrong that he sees, it never stops the work that he started the question tonight is this that if he sees my wrong but my wrong hadn't stopped his work the question is why <laughs> can, 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 I, can I tell you why can, can I tell you why it, it, it's because though he sees my wrong he also sees my worth and my worth is greater than my wrong. Y'all don't know when to shout. Somebody online will catch that. My, my worth is greater than my wrong. The Bible suggests that he sees my worth. I, I give God praise because God, he, he doesn't look at me the way folk may look at me. For folk look at you and they see you're right now, but God looks at you and he sees you're not yet. Because with God, you're not yet is always greater than you're right now. Man will look at you and they'll see how you are. God will look at you and see how you can be. Man will look at you and see what you've done, but God will look at you and see what you're capable of doing. People will look at you and see your past. God looks at you and see your potential. A man look at you and see your faults. God look at you and see your favor. A man looks at you and see all of the grief. God looks at you and see all of the glory. That's because when God looks at you, he looks at your wrong, but he also sees your worth. And you owe God crazy praise because your worth is greater than your wrong. Can you turn to somebody and just testify? Say, neighbor, my worth is greater than my wrong. You may not recognize it. You may not appreciate it, but you got to understand that you still have intrinsic value value that God still sees your worth are you hearing me in this house I had an experience not long ago I want to share it with you I, I was training I'm training Anderson I, I know that you're working out and I was training and as I was running around on the track I went one day I, I saw um, something um, in, in in the bushes and I went over um, to the bushes to look because I I, I saw something it, it was so something that caught my eye, and I got closer to the bushes, and I looked down, and I saw something, and I, I, I started squinting my face because I couldn't believe what I was, what I was, I was looking at. I, I saw a, a, a $100 bill um, that, that was there in the, in, in the bushes, and, and, and I, I looked at it, and, and it didn't look crispy. It looked like it had been there for some time that the coloration ha had gone it was crumbled up it, it was it was it, it was wrinkled it it, it was it, it, it looked disheveled it, 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 it looked abandoned and 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 abused and and I, I went closer to that $100 bill and y'all ain't gonna believe this but but it but it it it, it developed anthropomorphic qualities uh, it, it started talking to me. Uh, it, it, 
it, it, it developed human characteristics and and the $100 bill started talking to me. Can I tell y'all what, what it said? It, 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 it said, sir, I, I know I don't look like the, the other money in, in, in your pocket. I, I, I've been here uh, for some time that, that people that have walked by me and people have overlooked me. And I, I, I've been here. My, 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 my color is not like uh, the other uh, uh, money and other currency. The, the, the sun has, has, has tainted my, my, my color, uh, that, that, that I'm wrinkled. I'm not crispy like, like, I, but like I used to. He said, but, but if you pick me up and, and, and put me in your pocket and then take me to the store, I, I promise you, I still got my value. I, I don't look the same, but I still got my value. I, I don't look the same, but I still got my value. I, I, I've been discarded, but I still got my value. I, I've been overlooked. But, but I still have my value and somebody ought to give God crazy praise because somebody has overlooked you somebody has discarded you somebody has said you never amount to anything somebody has looked you in the face and declared you would never amount to anything but you ought to give God crazy praise because they may not ever see it but you owe God praise because you still have some value no you may not be young as you used to no you may not be the figure eight that you used to but oh God you ought to help me praise it tonight because you still have some value you have your eyes may be a little greater, but you got value. Your eyes may be dimmer, but you got value. Your footsteps may be shorter, but you got some value. Friends may be fewer, but you got some value. If I'm talking to somebody tonight and you still got some value, put those hands together and give God a I still got value praise. Give God I still got worth praise. Give God he sees my worth praise. Give God praise in the house. Jeremiah, he, he, he's looking. I wish y'all can see him. He, he's looking th th through the window and he sees, he, he sees the potter working on this clay. He, he notices that the potter has started working on, on the clay. He, he notices that the potter, watch this, has seen worth in the clay. But he notices in verse 4, the B clause, thirdly, he, he notices that the potter has shaped the wheel of the clay. Please don't miss that, church. He notices, Kim, that, that the potter started working on the clay. He notices, secondly, that the potter saw worth in the clay. But he notices, thirdly and finally, that the potter shaped the wheel of the clay. I, the, the Bible says that he, he made it again as, as seemed best to him as Jeremiah continues to look through the window watching the potter at work he notices something that blew him away he notices that the potter is shaping the wheel of the clay he, he, he noticed watch this that the potter believed in makeovers <laughs> he, he, he noticed he noticed he noticed he noticed that the potter uh, made the clay over again he made the clay over again he, he had every right he had every right to throw away the clay because the bible says watch this that the clay was marred in the hands of the potter and so the potter had every right don't miss this church the potter had every right to discard the clay the potter had every right to throw away the clay but the text declares that instead of discarding the clay that the bible says don't miss this church that he made it over again watch the text as best seemed to him that, that, that tells me, church, that he was not trying to please the clay. You missed it. He, he was not making the clay over again, trying to conform to the will of the clay. But the potter kept making the clay over again. Watch this. Because the potter had a design in his mind. Are y'all getting this tonight? The potter had an image in his mind of how he wanted the clay to look like. And the potter was not going to stop making the clay over again until the clay looked like the image 
image he had in his mind. Somebody right now listening to me virtually or in person, you are asking God, why are you making me over and over again? God, why are you disturbing my sleep? Why can't I get any rest at night? God, why am I having these dreams and visions? Lord, why are you disturbing my peace? Lord, why are you shifting my life? Why are you manipulating and orchestrating the sequences and occurrences in my life, God? What are you doing to me, God? And God told me to tell you that what he's doing is that he's trying to shape your will. He's trying to get you to conform to an image, not that you want to look like, but he's trying to get you to look like. Are y'all hearing me? But here is the shout, church. What shouted me is that the whole time while the potter is shaping the will of the clay, watch this, he never took his hands off the clay. That means this, and I'm done, that while he's shaping the clay, he's sheltering the clay, that his hands that never, y'all don't know when to shout, he never took his hands off the clay. Can I tell y'all why y'all should be shouting? That explains why you're still here. You're still here because the Lord has never taken his hands off you. That while he's been shaping you, he's been sheltering you. Oh, don't make me come get you. That's why you got home when you didn't know how you were going to get home. Too high, too drunk. God got you home because he was sheltering you. That, that, that's why the bullet didn't kill you. That's why the accident didn't take you out. Because God was sheltering you. That, that's why you bounced back from COVID and cancer. Because God has been sheltering you. That, that's why you don't look like what you've been through. Because God has been sheltering you. That's why you still got joy after all you've been through. Because God has been sheltering you. That's why you can smile after you've been smitten. Dance in diversity. Praise him with problems. You can rejoice in the midst of ridicule. Because the God you serve, he has been sheltering you. And if you're not too embarrassed to testify, turn to somebody close to you and look him or her in the face and tell him, neighbor, he's been sheltering me. His hands have been on my life. As I hasten to my seat, my father died 20 years ago. I'm this coming August. Some of y'all may have known my father. He was a big fellow, six foot four, had big hands. And what always scared me as a child, Norris, was this, that my father would put his hands on me. I, I never did what other kids did in high school because I was afraid that my father would put his hands on me. And so when I was in school, I never smoked weed uh, as much as the other kids because I was afraid my father would put his hands on me. I, I, I never talked back to teachers uh, as much as my classmates did because I was afraid my father would put his hands on me. I, I never skipped school uh, as much because I was afraid my father would put his hands on me. I never was disrespectful to my teachers uh, as much because I was afraid my father would put his hands on me. Well, 20 years ago, Tyler, the Lord called my father home. So now my greatest fear is not that my father would put his hands on me. Now my greatest fear is my heavenly father would take his hands off me. That's why every now and then I got to go to God. And when I pray, I tell the Lord, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw of myself from me, oh, where shall I go? Because my fear now is that the Lord will take his hands off me. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I came tonight to tell somebody that the safest place in the whole world is in the hands of the Lord and I don't know who I'm talking to but somebody tonight needs to hear this word because you're running the risk 
of giving out of the will of God. Do you hear me? But the Lord told me to tell somebody that the safest place in the whole world is in his hands. Do me a favor and I'm going to leave you alone. Turn to somebody close and look your neighbor in the face and tell them neighbor, oh neighbor, come on talk to him. Tell him neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but stay in his hands. Stay in his hands. Though the wind of life start to blow and the lightning of life start to flash. Do you hear me? You need to stay in his hand because shelter is in his hand. Joy is in his hand. Peace, I gotta quit y'all, is in his hand. But most of all, salvation is in his hand. So every now and then, when my way gets kind of dark, when my mountains get kind of high, when my friends get kind of few, I steal away. I tell the Lord, 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 keep me in your hand. Keep me in my hand. Keep my child in your hand. Keep my church in your hand. Keep my family in your hand. Oh, 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 Lord. Whatever you do, don't let me get out your hand. Because if you stay in his hand, Everything will be all right. Do you hear me? Do me a favor, and I promise I'm gonna leave you alone. Turn, turn, y'all no, ain't turning. Turn to somebody for the last time. Look them in the face. Tell them, neighbor, oh neighbor, if you stay in his hands. He will take care of you if you stay in his hands. He will walk with you if you stay in his hands. He will talk with you if you stay in his hands. Every, every, every thing will be all right. In the all right. I don't wanna holler. Is it alright? Yeah! Yeah! Ah! Ah! Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? If you know that he will sound yeah! Sound yeah! Sound yeah!
glory if you know you're still in his hands. That he's working on you because he sees the worth in you and that he's still molding the will in you to conform it to be like his. Can we take 30 seconds just real quick and bless him for being a faithful God. You got 30. Come on, let's bless him that we're in the master's land. Come on. As he sees your word, holding your will, I'm so glad he didn't take his hand off me before I was mature. I'm glad he didn't leave me in the yard, but he put me on the wheel. this word let's praise him for the message glory to God and the messenger tonight we're standing on our feet all over the building we're getting ready to go in just a moment but there may be one here tonight in the building out of the ark of safety or perhaps in the cyber sanctuary and that text he says that this is revelation just as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you Israel in my hands. Is what the Lord is saying to us. You're still in my hands. I don't know if there's anyone here does not have a relationship with Jesus the Christ, but we offer Christ to you, my brother, my sister. If you're here, the altar is open, you can come. If you need Christ, if you need a church, if you need a change, you need a point of contact for prayer. This altar is open. If you're in the cyber sanctuary, connect with us at connect at sg1church.org. Someone from our team will get back with you. Come on, let's put it in the atmosphere one time. Lift your hands all over the room. Lord, make me over, Lord. Say, Lord, make me over. While somebody's in that valley of decision, put that in the atmosphere, Lord. Make me over, make me over. Lord, make me over. Make me over again. Make me over again. God, make me over again, sir. Sing it again. Lord, make me over. If it's your prayer tonight, lift your hand and say, Lord, make me molding me. Conform my will to yours. Make me over. Sing, make me over again. If it's you, won't you come tonight? Make me over again. One more time, we're lifting it all over the house. Say, Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Said I need you right now, make me over. Make me over again. Say, make me over again, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise one more time for his word tonight. Stay in his hand. Stay in his hand. Bless you, preacher. Bless you, man of God. We're praying strength to the man of God that the Lord will restore virtue to his body as he is poured out tonight. God, you know what he stands in need of. God, touch his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. 
Oh God, revive him even in the midst of this. Give him fresh word and revelation for tomorrow. Give him strength, God, to deliver a word that brings deliverance to your people. And we promise to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen in the heavens. Amen in the earth. Amen. Let's thank God one more time for the word of God tonight from the man of God. We're getting ready to go. We're a little bit behind the time tonight. We want to be done, but we're getting ready to go. I invite you to come back tomorrow. Let's thank God for Pastor uh, Cambridge McGill and Lady Allison McGill. Blessings to you. Thank you for being here with us again to all the visitors here in person and online. We thank you for coming out tomorrow night. We're starting again at 7 p.m. We had some technical difficulties today that had us behind a little bit, but we're starting sharply at 7 p.m. on tomorrow night. Amen. Won't you tell somebody, tell them come in the house. Revival is here. Revival is here. Tell them there's a word in the mouth of this man of God. You need to come and be in the place. You heard that word tonight. You need to be in the right place at the right time. We're in the potter's house. You need to come and be in the house. Tell somebody to come in uh, and be with us on tomorrow. Amen. We'll give the benediction on tomorrow night as we close this. But let us go in peace and serve the Lord. I know we can't hug people, but just smile at somebody. I do want to encourage you, if you did not have an opportunity to give, you can give through GiveLify and electronic options you can give but we're going in peace and we're serving the Lord praising him because he never took his hand off of us and we are still in the potter's hands God bless you until tomorrow night y'all maintain victory God bless you